This video content is strictly for educational purposes only. All demonstrations, techniques, and information provided in this video are meant to help you understand cybersecurity better. We strongly advise against using any of this information for illegal activities or unethical practices. Please like, subscribe, and comment. All right, good afternoon. We are back at it. We're going to do a little bit of Hashcat, a little bit of Hashcat. Now, for those that aren't familiar, Hashcat serves as a, uh, well, it's a, it's a rainbow table. And you may be asking yourself, what in the world is a rainbow table? Well, a rainbow table provides hashes for well-known passwords, uh, and that's how they're able to be cracked. In normal encryption, in normal encryption, you have to have three things. You have to have the original text. We often call this plain text or clear text. And then you have to have the algorithm you're using, uh, which would be anything. It could be AES, Advanced Encryption Standard. It could be uh, ECC. It could be whatever, right? Whatever algorithm. The mathematical solution to change that clear text or plain text into a uh, into encrypted text, right? And then you have to have a key. And that key either locks or unlocks combined with that algorithm. And so you have literally plain text or clear text. And then you utilize the algorithm and then the key to output ciphertext or uh, encrypted text. However, however, hashing is not encryption. And you'll hear it often called one-way encryption, but that's, that's not accurate at all, right? In order to be encrypted, like I said, you have to have the algorithm and you have to have the key. Um, in hashing, we just have an algorithm. There is no key. And so with hashing, you cannot decrypt something. If I go through and I say, oh, this is my password, I throw it through an algorithm, then that's fine. The algorithm does its job, but there's no key associated with it, and I can't go through and reverse that, right? So as part of hashing, which you've probably seen before, let me blow this up, right? We can do something like an echo, and here you go. I think I used this before, right? Let's change this. Let's do, let's just do a, a random password. We'll do, ooh, let's look up, let's look up normal passwords. Worst passwords in the world. Let's look one up, right? Uh, weak passwords. Let's use common passwords. Common passwords. And here we go. Here's a known. Let's use unknown today. We'll use unknown, okay? So very well-known password. Let's use unknown. So I can use unknown just like this. And then I can do echo in and then SHA-256. It's going to be the algorithm that we're going to utilize, and it's going to provide me a sum. And so this is a hash. Now, there's no way to decrypt this. I can't go through and be like, okay, well, you know, let me throw in a key because there is no key. So it can't be decrypted. And as such, it's often called one-way encryption, but it's it's not encryption because there's no key, right? I think we went through that. So uh, I'm going to take this hash. I'm going to take this hash right here. We're going to throw it into a document and I'm just going to open up a leaf pad and let's call it secrets.txt. We'll call it secrets.txt. Uh, let me grab this. Da -da -da. I'm just going to copy that. There we go. We'll open up that document. Uh, I'm going to throw it in there. So we'll take that and we'll do save. That will save it. I can also do control S, but it's already been, it's been saved. So we'll hit there. And then I can do a cat secrets. Secrets. .txt, and then that is our hash, right? So we have our hash value. Now, Part of the wonders of hashing is that it can't be decrypted. And a lot of times what we'll do is we'll take passwords that we get from different people, right? We have their username and their password. They sign into a website, they log in, so on and so forth. And we store their passwords rather than in a clear text format like this, we hash them out. And as such, you can see that this right here, this giant long hash is far better and more secure than just storing uh, unknown as our password, right? So here's the thing though, I can crack this and I crack it by using a rainbow table because we're not decrypting it. What we've done is we've got the word list and then we create the hashes because it's an algorithm that can be utilized. I don't need to decrypt it. I just find, it's like controlling F, right? It, it's looking through a word document. And if I were to take Excel, for instance, right, let's open up an Excel document here. If I were to take Excel and on this document we take and we say, okay, well, I have a password one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I put the hash there, right? So we could just, uh, let me spread this out, da, 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 da. and I would say, this is the password. This is the MD5 hash. So I would do MD5 sum, and this is the SHA 256 sum, just like that. 
And then I could go in here and I could go, you know what, let's do that echo command, just like this. And then I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, just like that, and be like, okay, well that's my that's the hash. Because that that will always be the hash, because it's an algorithm, right? So I go in and I throw that in to my shot six, and then I could do another one for MD5, and I just go, okay, well, I'm gonna do MD5 sum now. Just like that, and that gives me a smaller one. And boom, done. And what I do is I go through and I could literally do this all day long, right? However, very tedious, very slow going, but I've got all this information because from now on, I always know that password one, two, three, four, five, six has this hash associated with it. Now this isn't encrypting, this is just cracking, right? Uh, or decrypting, I should say, right? It's just, it's just cracking it. So let's use Hashcat to go, on to go through and let's see if we can't break this original password that we made, which was unknown, which is associated with that document, which if I do an LS, it's in their secrets right there. And again, cat secrets. Okay, now I could do 100 different passwords on 100 different patches, and it would still provide me with that same kind of thing. So we're gonna use a program called Hashcat. So I'm gonna do Hashcat, just like that. And we're gonna do a dash H first, right? That dash H is gonna go through and it's gonna give me all kinds of basic commands that I can utilize, right? That's the help menu associated with it. And if you scroll up, you can kind of go through, and it has all kinds of great stuff, right? It has all kinds of great stuff. And you can take your time, you can go through and read this thing if you'd like. Uh, we're gonna use some common commands. We're gonna use some common commands just to go through and see what we can't do. Well, assume that we didn't know that it was actually a SHA-256 sum, right? We didn't know what kind of hash was utilized. Now the first step, the first step is if I didn't know what our password type was or what our hash value was, is I could use something called hash ID. And so I could do hash ID, just like this, hash ID. And then I could do uh, dash M, and then I could just throw in that secrets.txt. So secrets dot secrets, I can't talk today. And then here you can see what type of hash it's identifying. So it's analyzed that text document and it said, hey, I think that our SHA-256 or our hash associated with it is either SNAFRU-256, SHA-256, I could be RIPE-MD. Uh, all these would be associated with 1400. Then we can see RIPE-MD, Havel, Ghost, those would be associated with 6900. It could also possibly be a SHA-3-256, which would be code 5000. Now this is important because if I want to identify or if I want to go through the process and try these different hashes, I can go through it. Now, I know that it's a SHA-256, but let's try to do it. Let's try to do it with a 5000. Let's just see what happens when we do 5000. So do you start this up to actually do Hashcat? We're going to do Hashcat, and then we're going to do that TAC M again, uh, this time for Hashcat instead of Hash ID. Make sure you understand those are two different programs, two different uh, identifiers, right? Uh, and then we're gonna use that code. We're gonna use that 5,000, right? And then we have to do a TAC A. That's gonna tell us what type of attack we wanna do. Um, we're gonna do a zero. Uh, a zero attack, if you scroll up, you'll find out that it's very standard attack. It's, it, it, it is the normal, right? And then I have to identify what I wanna attack. In this case, I wanna attack that secrets.txt. And then I need to, well, I need a word list. And you know what? I don't think I did that yet. Let's open up a new window. Right here, I'm just gonna do, right off the bat, I'm just gonna do an ls, because I'm looking for that rockyou.txt. And I think it's in the downloads. So we'll do cd downloads, just like this. cd downloads. And then we'll do another ls. And there it is, it's rockyou.txt. So uh, I could move my secrets folder in here. I could do it that way. Or uh, I could just reference it. I'm just gonna reference it. So we'll just do right here, it's gonna be downloads and then rockyou.txt. Let's go back into this other window. Uh, I could just do downloads like that, and then rockyou.txt like that, and it should find it. So let's see what we got here. Oh, it's not finding it. What did I do wrong? It's not a forward slash. There it is. It is a forward slash. We make I make mistakes all the time. All right. So it's looked through it, and you can see here that. Uh, you can see here that it's it's provided it, right? It said, well, maximum password link supported zero. And it's going through and it's saying, well, I don't understand. It's not this hash file, which is this hash, separator unmatched. It's not finding it, right? Because we used, we said, hey, it's, we think it's SHA-3. Well, it's not SHA-3, it's SHA-2. And so we have to come back in and we need to change this right here. 
Now, if I scroll up, I can see that the code is 1400. So I just put 1400 in now. And then let's see what it does. <clears throat> now it's going through. And it's looking to find this, this item. It's looking to find what's going on here, right? So this will take a minute as it goes through and try to find this specific item. It tries to go through and figure out what's going on, right? And there you have it, right? So it's gone through and it said, hey, I went through all these passwords, all these passwords in there, right? And we can see here that this hash is associated with the word unknown, right? Unknown. And so that is Hashcat. That's breaking passwords with Hashcat. Now I could do this in a variety of different ways. Uh, and you could definitely play around with it and see what's going on with it, but that's that's probably the quickest. Now, one other thing while I got you here, right? Let's do, let's change directories over to that downloads folder. I don't think I've shown this yet. Let's go through and let's look at this rockyou.txt. I'm just going to do a cat rock.txt. I want you to show how many passwords are common that this thing has identified. It's just a slew of them. I mean, it's still going on. These are all common passwords that they've picked up that people have used over the years that they have identified. All righty then, that's Hashcat. I hope you found it educational. I hope that you learned something from it. If you did, I would deeply appreciate that like, that subscribe, and of course that little bell icon at the top. Uh, see if we can't get up to that to that 2,000 subscriber base. I'd really appreciate your, your support. And as always, I'm Dr. K. We'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone.